Welcome to Fantastic Fiber Friday and today I'm going to show you how to spin a silk blank and I know I've done this before but I was asked to give a longer more depth demonstration so here is my gorgeous silk blank hand dyed and basically what you do with this as you can see there's almost like a grain to it so what you do is you go ahead and rip right down this grain and it's strong it's silk so you really kind of got to give it a pull and it's been compacted into this sheet so sometimes what I'll do is I'll take a piece and rip it in half twice it's like I'm, I'm starting my drafting because you definitely will need to draft this unless you want to spin it very thick now to draft this because the staple is so long I kind of grab both ends and give it a good yank. Ooh, it's not even wanting to come that way. So I'll just split it right down the middle again. There, that's definitely better. Sometimes it'll draft out a little bit, sometimes it won't. Give it a good shake. Yeah, I feel like I'm doing one of those things for the marching band. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Went off on a little tangent there. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I got my wheel all set up here and we'll go ahead and spin some silk blanks. The main important part with the silk blanks is to draft really well because these were kind of compacted down into a sheet. Now what this makes is this makes a very interesting... Did I put my brake back on? Yeah. Okay. This makes a very interesting fun yarn and there's not a whole lot of drafting you can do once you've got it on the wheel so you just kind of let it become what it wants to become. It looks like I got another piece in here and I do. So I'll go ahead and move the hose out of the way. Caught, caught more than I wanted to catch. There's really, you can do a little bit of drafting once you're on the wheel, but really not a whole lot. And this makes a thick and thin, lumpy, bumpy yarn because that's just the characteristic of the fiber. I like making art yarns with these. You can go ahead and ply it with a piece of thread or back on itself and then with a piece of thread. I really like the look of that. It makes it look like a super lumpy, bumpy boucle. Um... Like I said, you can do a little bit of drafting once you get it on there, but you won't be able to get a whole lot, and you're not going to get anything super even just because of, you see, I don't know if you can see this, but you see all the little lumps and bumps in there. Oh, let me move. There we go, my hook over. And then it literally just spins itself together just like any other fiber when you need to add another piece. And a lot of times what I'll do is, in a sitting, I will go ahead and sit down and draft as much as I want to use. That way it's just not flying all over the place on me. Let me grab some more here. And I'm going to split this in half again. And you'll find that one side works a little bit easier than the other, just like any other roving. Like one side splits easier. I'm going to go ahead and attach this piece and continue on. I do know that if you can, if you can um, draft it down to about this thickness, you get quite a huge amount. It, it would actually be my little two ounce um, dyed piece of fiber here will actually more than fill up this four ounce bobbin. It's strange. It's like silk just takes volume but you can go thick or thin with it but you're not going to get anything perfectly symmetrical if you're looking for like a perfectly smooth um, balanced yarn you might want to go for it with some regular top for that but this stuff is just fun and it's fun to dye as well let's see split that one right down the middle again Catch them up. And 
then like I said, you can do some drafting after you get this, but you got to hold your hands really far apart because this, the smooth pieces of silk are so long. And sometimes I'll just draft it right down to where I want it to be and just let the wheel take it and don't do any drafting at all. This stuff is really fun to spin. It can be a little bit hard for a beginner because the drafting is kind of strange. But still very fun. There we go. And I don't really want this to be super thin. I kind of want this to be thick and lumpy and bumpy and fun because I'm going to add it into some art yarn later. But you can get it down to something fairly thin. I mean, really, really tiny. I don't know if you can see that on my thumb. But I kind of want this one to be more lumpy and bumpy style and thicker. And I actually have to think to spin thicker. Or change my wheel in a way that I can spin thicker. It's kind of set up for spinning thin right now. Because my default yarn happens to be pretty thin. But that's basically all there is to spinning silk blank. See now my hands are coming close together. It's getting harder to pull apart. There we go. And that's about all I'm going to do on this for right now. But I will show you my results here. Let me go ahead and just wind that around there and bring the camera over. Isn't that gorgeous? How fun does that look? But yeah, I'll apply it with something really cool. I may even save this single for later when I'm... Um, doing tutorials on art yarns and we'll make an art yarn out of it. Let me pull the camera back up here. Woo, I'm close. Woo. <laughs> so I hope you have a wonderful weekend. I hope you found this video informative and for those of you who are asking questions on and wanted a little more in-depth in idea on how to spin a silk blank, there you go. And I will see you next week.